what is the best programming language to learn? Admittedly, a lot of people will find this question to just be a bad question to ask altogether. After all, no one really agrees on the answer to this question. You could theoretically suggest the most used language, the language with the highest compensation overall, or the language with the best overall syntax and features. But these are all kind of hard to determine and are all slightly subjective. In fact, this entire video is subjective, so keep that in mind. While some will say that learning a language like C or C++ would be too difficult for a beginner, and that they should instead stick to an easier language like JavaScript or Python, just to learn the basics and have an easier time understanding what's happening, there's the opposite argument as well that a language like C or C++ will actually teach you so much about programming that learning any language afterwards will ultimately just become a cakewalk. Now, I think this discussion in general stirs up a lot of debates in the programming community. I'm not completely sure why. I do want to make clear that this video is not about what the best language is overall since answering that question would require us to talk about things like language design, syntax, performance, the libraries and ecosystems of that language, and probably specific features as well, all of which would be 100% opinionated and, again, subjective. This video was meant to offer value to anybody, whether you know programming or you don't, so hopefully I can provide value to anybody. We're going to discuss the wide uses and applications of different programming languages, and how they can be used in real-world situations, and why you might want to pick another one up. And so with all of that out of the way, grab yourself a coffee, maybe a beverage, and enjoy a good YouTube video. So let's start out with the easiest group of people to target, beginner programmers. If you were just starting out your programming journey, which language would be the best suited for learning the overall concepts of programming? And the truth is, there is no one definitive answer to this question, because it completely depends on the person. Someone with an interest in machine learning would probably choose to learn something completely different than someone who wants to do creative programming or front-end web development. For an experienced programmer looking to pick up another language, it would pretty much come down to many of the same factors, believe it or not. Programming is not syntax. I've said it before in a different video, it's problem solving. So if you aren't solving a problem, then arguably the language itself is completely useless on its own. This is one of the issues I have with tutorials teaching only syntax, and nothing but syntax. Programming languages are tools, and if you aren't doing anything with them, then it's pretty difficult to progress with them. Some people might mistake the videos that I made as only teaching syntax, but the videos I made were actually attempting to teach something completely different, and that is abstract concepts in programming. That are virtually universal in every language. To save some people time, I will give the closest thing to a definitive answer. I'll give an easy answer just before further exploring the topic. In my opinion, the best programming language to learn right now, and the closest thing to the definitive answer, is JavaScript. Why? Well, it's not only the easiest language to learn, in my opinion, but also the most popular. If you're programming for fun, JavaScript is a great choice because it allows you to access and modify the DOM in a browser, resulting in a more visually and creative experience. JavaScript is also highly versatile and in demand and can be used to create entire web applications, both the front end and the back end, as well as mobile apps using React Native and Native Scripts. In terms of job opportunities, JavaScript offers a multitude of options due to its versatility and popularity, and and not only that, but the language is constantly evolving with new ECMAScript versions coming out every few years, it seems. So there's really always something new to learn about the language, the libraries, the frameworks. And for all of these reasons combined, I believe JavaScript is the best language to learn without any further analysis. And I think it's completely fair to disagree with me on this because you could have valid points about this not really being true. My reasons for choosing JavaScript were like 100% subjective. And that's really kind of the point. Different languages are going to have different strengths and weaknesses, and the language you choose ultimately should depend on the specific problems that you aim to solve. In this video, we're going to explore the different domains of programming and the different languages you could start learning to do all sorts of different things. I think this is a better answer to the question and will give you insight into what you can actually do with programming. Front-end development, also known as client-side development, refers to the process of designing and developing the user interface of a website or web application. This includes everything that the user sees and interacts with, such as layout, colors, fonts, buttons, forms, images, and any animations that occur. For anyone who knows what a front-end web developer does, they know that the answer to this question is undoubtedly JavaScript, because it's the programming language that's used on the front-end of a web application. Therefore, anyone doing work on the front-end is going to be using JavaScript. Much of the time, you won't actually 
actually be using vanilla JavaScript, but some sort of front-end framework abstraction that's written in JavaScript. And the only real alternative to JavaScript for the front-end would be WASM or WebAssembly, which can be implemented in a lot of different languages, at least any language that supports WASM, for which there are quite a lot. But in the end, it's a lot more difficult to implement, and the browser still has to use JavaScript to run the WASM code. And WASM is somewhat slower in the browser than JavaScript. Not a great deal slower, but still notable. And this is mostly because the V8 engineers really made it hard to beat JavaScript's performance inside of the browser, since it's the native platform that JavaScript runs on. UI and UX designers, graphic designers, creative programmers are all going to be probably using JavaScript. Basically, if it's in a web page and you can see it, it's probably done in JavaScript. So if you want to be a front-end web developer or work on the client side, learn JavaScript. Or more recently, TypeScript because of type safety. So when it comes to creative programming specifically, there are a few tools that I'd like to highlight. Number one is 3GS, which is the JavaScript library for 3D rendering and 3D assets. You can also import Blender assets into 3GS, which is very, very cool. There's also the native Canvas API in HTML and JavaScript. There's also the WebGL API, which is also used with the Canvas API, which is very, very cool. There's also the Manum library in Python, which is an animations library for doing well, animations. And then there's OpenGL, which allows you to write your own shaders in C and C++, and is probably the most comprehensive graphics API and the most comprehensive tool that I've mentioned so far. Since creative programming is all about expressiveness, I think it's up to the artist to choose the tools that they want to use. Backend development refers to the creation and maintenance of server-side components of a web application or software system. It involves handling the logic, database operations, and integrations with other systems that power the application's functionality. Server-side logic that gets consumed by the front-end from programmatic interfaces are usually referred to as web APIs. The best language for server-side development and web APIs is tricky to figure out. An HTTP server, which is essentially what most backend services are, can be written in nearly every single language that exists. I'm going to give a lot of my own opinion opinions on this topic, so remember that this is all subjective. You shouldn't use a dynamically typed language for the backend, which means Python, Ruby, PHP, and JavaScript just aren't good choices in my opinion. Yes, there's Laravel and the meta frameworks that have similar performance to the Express framework, but I think that unless you're working with a serverless architecture, or you're writing a personal project that you have full control over and isn't used by thousands, you really shouldn't use a language that's weakly typed. Not only is there a greater possibility for bugs, but a bigger issue in my opinion is just performance. TypeScript only helps the developer with type definition but it still just gets transpiled straight back into JavaScript where it runs. Well, unless you're using Dino or Bun, but it still doesn't really get rid of the problem. The language can't optimize for performance by using type checks, not the same way other languages do. It mostly just gets rid of the problem in the IDE, which is a shallow solution. On the other side of the spectrum, C and C++ will probably result in the best performance possible, but there's a huge trade-off. Both are really hard to program in and aren't memory safe, leading to the possibility of memory leaks, buffer overflows, and segmentation faults, or just weird things happening with memory in general. That makes them not really the best choices. This leaves popular programming languages like Java, C Sharp, Go, and Rust, at least as far as popular languages go. Sure, there's also Perl, Scala, Haskell maybe, but they're a lot more niche and we're just not going to consider them. Rust gives you C like performance, but it is also quite annoying to write in. The syntax is just kind of weird. I don't think the syntax is weird. I think the syntax is different. It also requires you to dedicate a lot of time to learning it, which is why I think that it's probably a really good choice, but not one that I personally would consider. I think C Sharp is probably the best choice for an enterprise starting a new large scale project, at least right now. This is coming from someone who doesn't even really like .NET because of how much it resembles Java and its dependency injection hell. They're the same picture. But with .NET 7 being out and 8 coming around the corner, with performance metrics that beat the fastest HTTP framework in Go, I can't really argue against it. It also has the NuGet ecosystem and Microsoft's backing, so I think it's just probably the best for enterprise software. That being said, .NET does change very quickly. It has a lot of different ways of doing the exact same thing, and it's not exactly the simplest thing to, to use or understand, and it gives you way more control than you need in a lot of scenarios. 
And there's also the vendor lock-in from the fact that it's a framework controlled by Microsoft. But when you get past all of that, I think it's probably a great choice. Java and Spring are just fundamentally worse than C Sharp and Go in my opinion because the JVM is a bottleneck. But the performance alone doesn't really disqualify it from being a choice since the performance differences are negligible. I just wouldn't consider it personally because I hate Java, but you know, you can make your own choice. I think that after all is considered, Go would probably be my personal best choice. And this is biased, but Go is really simple. So simple in fact that it almost feels like Python while also somehow feeling like you're writing in C. You have access to pointers, structs, inferred data types, making it almost feel dynamic. It also has support for concurrency, Go routines, and the language was literally made for network applications. It's garbage collected, but still compiles to native binaries and is still faster than almost any other garbage collected language. Overall, I can't really pinpoint exactly which language I would choose, but if I were to rank them, I would probably say Go is number one, C Sharp is number two, and Rust is number three. All with compelling arguments to use one over the other. All completely subjective as well, but I can't really see a strong argument for any other languages besides these three, besides maybe JavaScript, but only for the meta frameworks in a serverless architecture. Mobile development is the process of creating software applications that run on mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. Mobile development involves designing, coding, testing, and deploying mobile apps for various platforms such as iOS and Android. So this one gets a bit complicated because not only is there different ways to answer this question depending on the platform, but there are also two competing platforms that we have to consider. If we answer with the best language for one platform, we would exclude the other. If we wanted to be technical here, we could just say that Kotlin is number one due to Android possessing 70% of the global Global market share. But I don't know if that's a satisfactory answer since some countries are primarily dominated by iOS devices. Therefore, their economy would require more iOS development. We can use the United States as an example where there's more iOS than Android. The main reason for this is likely that Android phones tend to be cheaper and Android as a whole is an open source operating system, not a specific brand, making them more affordable and obtainable by a larger percent of that population. There are also legacy languages that differ from modern languages and then cross-platform languages. So we'll explain the differences between these three. The original language used to build Android apps was Java, which was also used to build the Android operating system. But then a company named Oracle, the proprietary owner of Java, gave Google the middle finger and tried to sue them. Shortly after the debacle, Google created their own alternative language that also runs on the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, called Kotlin, which is a modern language that is used to build native Android apps in current day, and is the preferred choice moving forward by Google. Therefore, while Kotlin is the best choice for Android development, arguments can be made about Java as well. Objective-C was the original language used to build iOS apps back in the day, but it's been completely replaced by the Swift programming language in current day, a proprietary language used almost solely and exclusively for iOS and Mac application development. Therefore, for iOS, the answer is Swift, but Objective-C might also be an important language to know. We already discussed React Native and NativeScript that use JavaScript, but other cross-platform options include Xamarin, which uses c -sharp, Ionic, which uses JavaScript as well, and my personal favorite, Flutter, written in Dart. Dart was specifically made to tackle the issue of cross-platform development and can be used to compile down to native code of any platform, including Kotlin and Swift. While the result is not as optimized as writing in Kotlin or Swift yourself, the amount of time it can save a person by writing one code base to deploy to multiple platforms is simply insane. With all of that said, really it's up to you which of these options you want to use. There is no beating the native platform Form, so Kotlin and Swift win if we base our decision off of performance alone. Next up is mainframe development, the process of creating software for large, powerful computers known as mainframes. Mainframes are typically used by large organizations such as banks, airlines, and governments to handle massive amounts of data and transactions. Mainframe development involves writing software that run on these powerful systems, including the operating systems, database systems, and applications. Mainframes are used for a variety of critical applications such as financial transaction processing, airline reservation systems, healthcare records management, and government data processing. They are known for their reliability, security, and scalability, making them ideal for handling large-scale business operations. The number one language for mainframe development is COBOL. COBOL, Common Business Oriented Language, 
was developed in the late 1950s and early 1960s specifically for business applications, such as those used in finance, banking, and government. It was designed to be easy to read and write for non-technical users, and to handle large volumes of data efficiently. It's also a really old and outdated language. So a question I had was, why aren't other languages used instead? Well, mainframes have actually been somewhat replaced in some sectors in favor of cloud computing and the client-server architecture that is so commonly used on most web applications, but most legacy systems stay intact. The main reason COBOL is still used today in some industries is because many large legacy systems were developed in COBOL and are still in use. These systems have been in place for decades and they're a lot of times way too complicated to replace easily, making it more practical to just continue using COBOL. So if you ever find yourself wanting to build a mainframe in current day, I don't know why you would, but you would have to use COBOL. Or maybe not. I'm not really an expert in mainframe development. And now it's time to talk about data science. Data science is a field that involves using scientific methods, algorithms, and systems to extract insights and knowledge from various types of data. It combines aspects of statistics, mathematics, and computer science to analyze, interpret, and extract meaning from large and complex data sets. Data science involves a large range of activities, including the act of collecting, processing, cleaning, and analyzing of data, and then using various statistical and machine learning techniques to build models that can then predict and identify patterns in data. SQL is a common language used in data science simply for querying data from databases, but for actually operating on the data, Python is what is most commonly used. R and Julia are also very popular choices. Arguably, any language that you use is going to beat Python in performance. It's just a really slow language. But Python is the best language for data science simply because it has the largest amount of support in the form of libraries, frameworks, tutorials, and documentation. That is really the only argument that can be made. There is a new language called Mojo that is potentially going to be replacing Python, but we'll have to see what it does. Speaking of data science, now it's time to talk about machine learning and AI, which are two subsets of data science. The reason I chose to split them off is because they're just, in my opinion, a bit more specific and intentional with the problem that they're trying to solve. AI is a field of computer science that focuses on creating intelligent machines that can perform tasks typically that would require a human's intelligence to do so. Things like speech recognition, decision making, and learning from past experiences. Machine learning is a subset of this and is more concerned with building the systems that can learn and improve from data without being explicitly programmed. Essentially, machine learning algorithms learn patterns and insights from large amounts of data and then use this knowledge to make predictions or decisions. This is, I mean, this is just data science really, but just more specific. So if you want to do any of this, again, you're going to need Python because PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, NumPy, Pandas, Keras, the list of data science and machine learning libraries in PIP is virtually endless. If you want to explore this field of programming, you're pretty much going to be forced into using Python at some point. Now, most of the libraries written in Python are actually written in C or a different language, and then wrappers are made in the form of libraries so that you can use them in Python without having to know all of the C code. And of course, Mojo is coming out very soon, so we'll have to see what effect that has on the machine learning and data science space. It's now time to talk about game development. It's the process of creating video games for different platforms like consoles, computers, and mobile devices, and the web, I suppose. It involves a lot of things such as designing characters, levels, creating visuals and audio effects, as well as programming the game mechanics in general and the logic behind the game, as well as optimizing performance. Because performance is such a big factor, C++ is the main language that's used in game dev. The most popular game engines like Unreal Engine and Unity are written in C++, or at least partially written in C++, and the language that you use for Unreal Engine development is C++. While you can use other languages besides C++ for the actual development of the game, depending on the engine, you're probably better off learning C++ if you aim to be a game developer. The most complex games out there that run on PCs and consoles are likely using C++, and if you've ever had the unfortunate responsibility of writing your own game engine, you would probably have to do it in C++. Most game developers also agree that C++ is the best language for game development simply because performance is such a crucial metric. 
Now it's time to talk about embedded systems, which are the process of creating software to control embedded systems, which are computer systems that are built into other devices and are designed to perform specific tasks. Embedded systems are found in a wide variety of devices, from home appliances and automobiles, to medical devices, industrial equipment, and even toys. There are a lot of different languages used in embedded systems. Believe it or not, even a slow language like Python can be used on a controller like Arduino. But the crucial languages to know are assembly, either x86 or ARM, and C or C++. The the Rust has been entering the conversation due to its memory safety. ARM and x86 are used for different CPU architectures. ARM processors offer several advantages over x86 processors for embedded systems in particular. First, ARM processors consume less power, which is ideal for low-powered applications, which happens to make up the majority of embedded systems. Second, ARM processors are generally less expensive, which is important just for being cost-effective. Third, ARM processors are smaller in size, which is useful for embedded systems with limited space. However, the drawback of ARM processors is that they are generally less performant than x86 processors. However, despite this, ARM processors are designed to offer a pretty good balance between performance and power consumption, making them ideal for the majority of embedded systems. Additionally, ARM processors are more likely to be used in embedded systems in general, and they have more software support and development tools, as well as operating systems available for the platforms that are used for ARM-based embedded systems. And because of this, one could argue that ARM assembly assembly is simply the better of the two to learn if you're trying to do embedded systems. While assembly is pretty essential and both flavors of assembly could be useful, the high-level languages used in embedded systems are usually C and C++. Because of the lack of garbage collection and the lack of abstraction that these languages provide over the hardware, by providing access to memory and being compiled to both assembly and native binaries, and just because there's no way that you can run bloated garbage collected JavaScript code on low RAM devices, it's just not going to be possible. Same goes for most garbage collected languages in fact. There's very few garbage collected languages that you can actually use for embedded systems. Java and Go might be some of the only ones that you may use somewhat, but really C and C++ are the standard. There's not a single best language to learn for embedded systems because more than one language is required. However, generally speaking, at least one assembly language should be learned, probably ARM, and at least one high level language, probably C, because it's, well, used on around 80% of embedded systems, at least according to Google. Now it's time to look at a more general field, which is going to be science and engineering. And the most popular languages used for this are MATLAB, R, Julia, and C++. But the most popular language is probably Python. This is probably because it's popular, easy to pick up, and isn't compiled. Not being compiled means that the resulting program can run on any system because the end result isn't a binary executable. You also don't have to wait for the language to compile. It's also a lot easier for scientists and engineers who don't have extensive programming knowledge to use Python for easy scripting. In Python, you can get a lot done in fewer lines of code. And there are also plenty of different libraries available in PIP for scientific computing and data analysis, which end up being useful. Also, I want to clarify when I say engineering, I do not mean hardware engineering. Okay, those guys, they probably got to know assembly. In the context of programming, automation refers to the process of automating repetitive tasks or workflows using software. It involves creating scripts or programs that can perform tasks automatically, reducing the need for manual intervention and increasing efficiency. It involves writing code that interacts with different systems, applications, or APIs to perform actions, gather information, or manipulate data. Automation can be applied to various domains such as system administration, software testing, DevOps engineering, data processing, and repetitive business business tasks in general. A lot of languages are used for automation like PowerShell, Bash scripts, and even JavaScript, believe it or not. But Python is most commonly used because of its simplicity, readability, and its libraries and frameworks. So let's go over some of those frameworks. Selenium, for instance, is used for web automation. Scrapey is used for web scraping. PyAuto GUI is used for graphical user interface automation, essentially controlling the mouse and keyboard and mimicking a human being. And then there's the entire machine learning ecosystem that I talked about before, which can be used for automation as well. And in general, Python's versatility, extensive community support, and ease of use make it a really popular choice in automation across different industries. And in general, Python is really good for doing a lot of stuff and few lines of code. So it makes sense why people who are in the field of automation or testing use Python over other languages. 
Competitive programming is a mind sport that involves solving algorithmic problems in a limited amount of time using a computer programming language. It's often used as a way for programmers to hone their problem solving skills and programming abilities. In general, languages that offer strong support for algorithms and data structures are preferred in competitive programming. This is why C++ is the most popular choice due to its efficient performance and support for standard template library data structures. Essentially, the header files at the top of your file, you include them and then you get access to like 11 different pre-built data structures as well as pre-built algorithms and in a competitive setting they are lifesavers and of course python is used as well it's just used for literally everything apparently and java is also used but over 75 percent of competitive programmers use c++ as their preferred language due to the standard template library and finally, there's tech interviews, where a guy with a marker and a whiteboard tells you to solve an arbitrary coding problem that has no real world application. For interviews, the most widely used programming language is Python, most likely for its simplicity and popularity overall. In my own personal opinion, I believe C++ is the best language for DSA, data structures and algorithms, the type of problems that you'll be solving in an interview setting because of the standard template library I talked about before. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which language you use for a technical interview, what matters much more is your ability to solve problems with that language, which takes us to the conclusion. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of what to focus on based on your career path field or area of study. However, if you're just starting out with programming, I wouldn't worry too much about finding the perfect language to learn. Close to all languages will teach you the fundamentals that you need for any type of programming. So instead you should prioritize learning and building things because the more you practice and solve problems using different languages, the more comfortable and proficient you'll become. You'll soon realize that it's not the specific language that solves problems, but rather workflows and problem solving approaches that can be applied across different languages that solve problems. Remember, the most important thing is to dive in, gain experience, and continuously expand your skills. As you grow as a programmer, you'll discover that your ability to solve problems effectively transcends the limitations of any single language.